I have flashbulb memories. I remember how I felt, but I don't recall the procedure itself. I was taken to a clinic. I remember its disinfected smell and its whitewashed facade. Mostly, I remember deeply unsettling feeling in my stomach that something was not right. Afterwards, I was given an ice cream for being brave. Over my teenage years, I shoved what happened to me that day to the back of my mind. I am a really chatty person. You could even call me an oversharer when it comes to my best friend Feroz. I mean, I would launch into detailed descriptions of what I was wearing to a party or the latest doodling on my notebook. But I never chatted about Khatna. It didn't feel right to talk about it. Sometimes it doesn't even feel right now. Fast forward to college, I learned about the waves of feminism, gender fluidity, consent. I was the centerpiece and these terms started to revolve around my life. Finally, I had words to make meaning of my Khatna experience. I was torn inside. It was done during my childhood without my consent. How could my family, who encouraged education, ambition, and professional pursuits, have thought it was okay? I couldn't reconcile these dual identities. Each time I thought about the situation, my eyes brimmed with tears. In time, I managed to put what I was experiencing into words to Feroz. He heard me out and said, I can't imagine how hard it must be to talk about it. You don't remember, it doesn't mean it didn't happen, and it doesn't mean you don't still think about it. Still, each time I speak about Katna, tears well up. I also wrote about my journey to coming terms with Katna in a blog and shared it with my friends and family. But I'm not in a place of complete acceptance yet. It is still so hard to talk about. Maybe one day, I'll feel healed enough to have a conversation with my grandparents and friends face to face.